Hello everyone, welcome to another Fellow tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the meeting section in Fellow. So if you scroll over to the left and click on meetings in your left hand nav, you'll get to the meeting section. What's really nice about Fellow is that it integrates with your calendar. So all of your calendar events are going to be located in one place on the left. And what's nice is if you click on any particular event, we're just going to auto generate notes for that particular event. And you can go ahead and take notes for those items. Today, I'm going to show you a recurring meeting that I have uh, usually on Fridays. Ooh, look at that surprise event. <laughs> probably will be fun. I'm going to click on uh, weekly summary though here, back to the topic. And what you're going to see here is uh, my notes uh, for this meeting. And uh, it looks like uh, before the meeting, we have, we have these different notes for this meeting that's happening tomorrow. And if I scroll down, I, because this is a recurring event, I can actually see notes that we have for uh, the last meeting. And, and that last one was on September 13th, so it was a while ago, but we can see all that stuff in one place. So for recurring events, we can see everything there. The other nice thing I want to show you about the meeting section is you can also create new notes for meetings that are upcoming. So if I click on this, because it's tied to my calendar, it knows that the next meeting in particular is going to be on June 26th. So I can basically press create and it's going to create a meeting note for that particular meeting that will happen in the future. So now that I'm on this page, what I can do is I can actually type whatever notes I want in order to prep for this meeting. So uh, it could be things like uh, talk about a uh, business plan. Uh, it could be talk about um, new strategy. Uh, so whatever it is, the topics that I wanna add uh, I'll be able to add those here. And what's nice about that is I can assign those to any of the participants in the meeting. Fellow automatically knows who the participants in, in, the, meeting, uh, in, in the meetings are, and it's going to populate those folks. And so when those folks come in and they start typing things into that particular meeting, uh, it's going to be their face that shows up for that particular meeting. There's also an action item section, just like uh, in if you've watched some of our one-on-one -on -one tutorials, you can type in action items here. So for example, uh, you might want to do something like say, at the end of a meeting, uh, you know, redo business plan, for example. And so when you start to type something, it'll auto get assigned to yourself. But what you can also do is you can assign something uh, to someone else. So say there's a, another task called new spreadsheet, you can actually assign that to someone else who's an attendee for that meeting. If you look to the past though, if I scroll down uh, to one of my older meetings, you can see that this meeting, for example, had a lot of people in it. And what's nice about this is that, yes, all of those people can participate, but you can also assign tasks to any of those uh, people. Uh, so big project, as an example, and uh, Grace will take care of that task and I can even give it a deadline and let's try for next week. And so that will be there. So again, everything in one place, the other powerful uh, feature as it relates to the meeting section is that there's an action items tab at the top. If I click on this, it's just gonna show me all of the things in this entire meeting stream. So if we've been having this meeting for two years even, and it's a recurring meeting, all of those action items are going to be located in this one place. Super easy to access. And there's a bunch of features too. I can sort these in, in different ways. I can sort by status, which is the default, but I can also say sort by assignee. And I can see, ah, this guy, Michael Scott, right, two things. One of them is past due. Uh-oh, we should talk about that. So it's really nice to be able to do that. There's an option to hide in completed action items to make it easy. And I could just go back to streams to go back to uh, my list of notes. What you'll notice is that this section is obviously always collaborative. So all of the people who are involved in this particular meeting uh, are going to be able to see everything that's typed here. As a matter of fact, it is real time. So if there's multiple people typing uh, and prepping for this, you'll see their edits in real time. What I'll draw your attention to is the right though. So that's the private section. So even in a meeting, you might want to take some private notes for yourself. Uh, and it might be something like, remember to do project. 
And that's gonna be a private note for yourself that nobody else will see. So that right section is just for you. There's a bunch of things, by the way, if you hover over uh, these profiles, you can see you know, who they are and who they report to. So some extra information that is also available there. When the meeting is done, what you might wanna do is you might wanna click on send notes and you can then send those notes either by email, by Slack, or you can even copy the link and share it in some other way. Maybe you'll text it out, who knows. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is that this meeting can be tied to, uh, well, this meeting is tied to a particular event in, in your calendar. Uh, if I click on the plus button, I wanna show you one more thing as it relates to the note wizard that shows up. Obviously, you can choose your own template. So for example, you might wanna choose remote team meeting agenda, or you might choose something for all hands meeting. And these are some things that we've created that are available for you that you can use, but obviously you can also create your own. So this one, this meeting that we're gonna prep for, uh, it's gonna create a note for July 3rd. And I wanna draw your attention to these two options here. So you can either carry forward outstanding talking points or outstanding action items. I'm gonna click on outstanding action items. I typically don't check this. And the reason for that is I can actually see all my action items at the top here. So I don't typically need to do this, but I will check it just to show you what it's like. And what's nice is when I press create, what you'll notice is a new note will be created and you'll notice that this new note is already populated and there's two talking points and two action items in there already. And the reason is the old stuff was actually carried over. So again, because we hadn't completed those items, they're actually carried over. But just to show you how this works, if I were to say, check this item here and um, you know, do this one more time, say this time I'm only carrying over talking points. When I press create, what you'll notice is that only one talking point is carried over. Again, it's always the incomplete ones that, that we carry over, and so you can see that there as well. Another thing that I wanna point out in the meeting section is you can click on the start item, and that's going to favorite or star that stream, and, and then it's gonna be readily accessible in all the other locations that we have that will allow you to uh, quickly access that particular meeting. Also want to draw your attention to the ask for feedback button over here. This will allow you to get meeting feedback very, very quickly. What's nice about it is that we're all automatically going to auto populate all the people who are attendees in that meeting. They're all going to be located there. So you don't have to add them yourself. You can type a, uh, you can basically type in the subject. So say rate meeting uh, from one to five. And then what you might wanna do is you actually might wanna add a star rating question like this and just say, you know, rate this one to five, preview and send, and then you can actually send that out. What's really nice is again, you're gonna no get notifications in, in a few ways about this, but one of, the, one of the interesting things that will happen is you're actually going to get a notification via Slack. So for example, if you are using Slack, you're going to get a notification on there and you can even respond to uh, those, those feedback requests directly on Slack. Or if you want by email, or if you're logged into Fellow, either on the mobile app or on the desktop app, you'll be able to take action and respond to that feedback there. There are a few more things uh, because uh, we're gonna go pretty deep on the meeting section today. Uh, that I also want to point out. Another one is the more action section. So here, what you'll notice right now is this: there's this concept of merge stream. And merge stream is a really important feature that can come in handy, especially if you've been having a meeting for a long time. Now, what merge stream does is say that you invited a new person to a particular recurring meeting all of a sudden fellow doesn't necessarily want to assume that you want to give this new person access to all the old meeting notes. So what merge stream will allow you to do is actually merge in any old notes. So what you'll notice is if you kind of change the meeting in your calendar that you might not have access to the old notes because you've made you know, a substantive enough change that we're not sure if we should, we should basically merge those old notes. But if you want to do that, you can actually click on Merge Stream, you can search for whatever meeting, 
And when you say click on it, then you're able to merge those particular notes and then everything will show up in one place. Once you start using Fellow for a while, you'll notice that things like that actually become particularly useful. A few more things that I wanna point out uh, in the meeting section. One is that obviously there's a today button. You can scroll back and forth and see, this is kind of like an infinite scroll view that we've created, which is particularly useful. But if you wanna go back to where you were, you can always press today and we'll take you right back. Uh, you can actually click on this over here. If you wanna quickly browse to a particular month or a particular place, you can actually use this, this window over here. Uh, the other thing is we also have a calendar view. So you can actually click on that and it you know, kind of looks like this. So you can also use that. Uh, the other thing is this triple dot menu here, a few more options for you to take a look at. By default, uh, we will show you decline meetings, but you can obviously uncheck that. Same with all day events and some other options for canceled and hidden meetings. You could use those as well. And sometimes you just need more space. And if you need more space, you can always click on these, uh, this menu item here. And when you do that, basically it goes away and just gives you more room to do your thing. Finally, I want to point out that you can also click on the triple dot menu here and do some great things like attach files. You can go back and see version history for, the, for your particular meeting. You can see some keyboard shortcuts that we have. Uh, and you can apply templates or, or save new ones. So now, and obviously full screen mode, really powerful. Make sure to check that out too. So now what I wanna do is I wanna show you the last part. So let's get a little bit more advanced. I wanna show you how you can actually, in the meeting section, make some edits to your particular meeting note. So this whole section is completely customizable. So as a matter of fact, if I wanted to do something like actually go ahead and delete a bunch of this, you know, I, I can actually do that. So it, it very much acts like this customizable document that you could do whatever you want with. And say in, in my weekly meeting, and let me just call it weekly meeting, what I wanna do is I wanna have a few different sections. First, I wanna talk about wins. So I'm gonna create a header called wins. And if I click on this plus button over here, it will allow me uh, to actually do that. Um, or what I can also do is I can type a keyboard shortcut. So in this case, the pound sign, and that will also allow me to do the same thing. So let me also add another section. And this time I'm going to call this section, you know, uh, things to improve. And uh, maybe I'll create another section and this section is gonna be called action items. By the way, you can also press the slash item. Uh, and if you press that slash key, it will also open up the same menu. So I'm gonna click on header there and maybe I'll just call this one actions. Now under wins, I kind of wanna leave a place for people to add talking points. So I'm going to click the plus button and, and I can then select a talking point. Um, and underneath that, what I can do is I can show you what a keyboard shortcut looks like for the same thing. So parentheses and a space will also create a talking point. So you have a few ways to do that. You can either click on the plus button, you can use a keyboard shortcut, you can use the slash menu to bring up the, the same menu. And for action items, it's the same deal. So this time I'm just gonna type slash and I'm going to click on action item. But the other thing I wanna point out is I could have easily pressed type brackets and then space and it would have done the same thing. So now I like this template. I wanna use this template and I wanna use it for all my meetings going forward. How do I do that? I can actually click on this triple dot menu and then I can save that as a template. And when I do that, I can give it a name and if I check this item over here, it's gonna be used as a template for all of my upcoming meetings. It makes it really easy uh, for me to do that. And of course, I can also, if I wanted, uh, choose from you know, a bunch of the other different templates that we've created. And you can actually also, as an organization, create your own templates that are gonna be available for, for everybody in the company. So that's another thing that you can do. So that pretty much actually does it for a good overview of, of the meeting section in Fellow. It's very similar to the one-on-one -on -one section. 
Uh, a lot of the same functionality, except that multiple people exist in that particular meeting and they can all collaborate in, at the same time. And if you have more questions, uh, we do have more videos that are much more specific about the specific features uh, within the product and, and within the meeting section. So make sure to check those out as well. Thank you so much for joining and we will see you in the next video.